Hey everyone, I'm Kai Chimura, the host of the Soccerpedia podcast. For today's episode, my guest is Stefan Cleveland, who is a goalkeeper for the Seattle Sounders. Stefan made his MLS debut back in 2018 with the Chicago Fire before being acquired by the Seattle Sounders in 2019. So without further ado, here's the show. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good, good. Uh, glad that you had uh, time to join in. Yeah, absolutely. Sweet. Uh, so yeah, just wanted to uh, yeah wel- welcome to the show. Uh, I think this is the first you're the first MLS player that I've had on the episode. Oh, nice! It's an honor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, I know a lot's been going on in the league the past couple of days. I know it's been crazy. Uh, how's the uh, how's the team uh, doing as far as uh, handling uh, what's been going on the past couple of days? It's good. Uh, honestly, everything. Everything yesterday happened very fast. Uh, we kind of saw the NBA take the lead on it, uh, which obviously the Bucks, uh, it was close to home for them. And, you know, it made a lot of sense. And we definitely supported what they were doing. And we supported, uh, you know, the cause of you know, obviously social injustice is, is a massive issue right now. Um, but so we got together as a team. Uh, we, we were the last, last game. Uh, so we didn't think that we were going to be setting the trend, but we kind of, at the time of the discussion, we were talking as if, you know, all the other games were going to be played. Um, and it was, it was a very honest discussion within the team, uh, within our players down in, down in LA, because we were at our pregame meal and it, yeah, everybody had, had their own opinions, had their own thoughts, had, um, had different perspectives from being all around the globe, different cultures, different backgrounds. Uh, I thought it was a very productive conversation. And um, I think as a group, we all decided that we didn't want to play. We wanted to stand up, stand on the side of change. And uh, hopefully, you know, hopefully the message was sent, um, but hopefully this isn't, this isn't the only action that's taken. Hopefully I, I, I definitely want our team and the league and I mean the rest of sports to, for this to be step one and the stepping stone and, it's, it's a matter of, okay, so we didn't play, so what? So now, now what can we do going forward? What can we use this platform as now? Yeah, I hope, hopefully, because, you know, as far as professional athletes, uh, you guys have huge, huge platform that reaches an audience of millions of people. And, and I hope that, you know, every, every day gets a little bit better. Uh, and, and yeah, just got to take it one day at a time. But uh, I respect the uh, decisions that uh, you and other uh, athletes across all the leagues have have taken because it's a it is a huge issue right now. Yeah, it is, and I think it's it's something that everybody needs to be aware of um, and needs to be involved with because it's not it's not just athletes, it's not just the celebrities that make the difference. They can say what they think, but it's it's the ground level that has to change. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, and so let's move in. I want to talk about your uh, own personal career. Uh, you. Uh, well, have you always been a goalkeeper uh, or did you transition to another uh, position as a I have as pretty much I've always been a goalkeeper. Uh, my older brother was a goalkeeper and I remember when I made my first select team at eight years old, uh, they invited every, you know, whoever wanted to come out to goalkeeper training to come out. And I don't think they expect me to show up, <laughs> but I was there. Uh, and so I think for the first couple of years when I was, by the time I was like 11 or 12, I was pretty much just playing goalkeeper. Um, Doing, you know a little bit of both and I think that's really benefited me in my career long term because as the game's changing goalkeepers need to be more and more proficient with their feet uh, and I think that is that's something where I can provide for the team uh, and so I think but um, having said that I think in games it's been it's been a long time that I've been just a goalkeeper <laughs> and uh, so you grew up grew up in Ohio you end up playing uh, or born in Ohio uh, you uh, play uh, collegially at uh, at Dartmouth and uh, Louisville, uh, what made your, what was your decision to go to Dartmouth and then what made your decision to transfer to Louisville? So coming out of high school, I was, um, you know, I, I was not like a top recruit or anything like that. Um, being in the Midwest, there are a lot of ACC big 10 schools that, you know, with good soccer programs, but I had not really heard from any of those programs. Uh, and I knew, Academics was an important thing to me and my family. Um, so talking to my high, or to my club coach uh, when I was in high school, uh, kind of a, what level I should be looking at in college, because he was, uh, at the time, he was, I think, a goalkeeper coach or affiliated with Xavier University. And so I know he had a good, 
good idea and understanding of the college game. And he suggested I look into the Ivy League and Patriot League uh, with my academics. And so I'm spring break my junior year. My one week, my mom took me up around a bunch of schools in the in the East Coast, and my dad took me the next week. Uh, and we checked out just so many schools, talked to coaches, uh, picked the ones I liked, and then that summer between junior and senior year, I went to several camps. Uh, and in the end, it was it was Dartmouth that I, I really liked Dartmouth. I liked the location, I liked the culture, I liked the coach. Um, and then the coach liked me. There were a few other schools that were in the mix, but I think those were, or Dartmouth was definitely uh, the best fit for me. And I was happy that it, it worked out really well. And then as far as Louisville goes, I did not play at all my freshman year. Uh, so I had an extra year of eligibility in terms of the NCAA, I couldn't have stayed in the Ivy League because it wasn't an injury redshirt. And I had graduated in the spring of my senior year, or my fourth year. Uh, so I needed to go to a different school if I wanted to continue playing NCAA soccer. And I wanted another shot at the NCAA tournament. Uh, I got knocked out twice in the second round at Dartmouth and I was, I was so eager to get further. Um, so I, and, and I think that I don't, I wasn't quite ready for the pros yet. Uh, I think I could have found probably a team in the USL and kind of hacked my way through it. But I really wanted another look at the, at the college game. And I talked to a couple of schools in Louisville. Again, it just kind of fell into my lap and it was, it was a great fit. Uh, Ken Lola was a fantastic coach there. Uh, I really liked his culture. I loved the facilities, the stadium, the team, um, and, and kind of what, what they stood for there. Um, and one of the important things for me at the time was, was I wanted to be on a good team and have a good year. Cause, uh, for me, it was, I knew it was going to be a one and done year and there wasn't, you know, a lot of time to, for like a rebuilding year, uh, with the program. And I knew they were going to be good that year. And I felt that I could step in and be a leader and make a difference. Uh, and I think it, it worked out really, really well. We had a great team. Uh, unfortunately we got knocked out in the elite eight and, didn't win any hardware that year. Uh, definitely disappointing, but it was, it was a fantastic team and a fantastic experience. Awesome. And, uh, and to fast forward, because of course you ended up continuing on past the elite level. Uh, you got drafted by Chicago Fire in 2017 uh, MLS draft. What was that moment like uh, hearing your name being, uh, being called that you were selected? It was, uh, it was amazing. I actually, <laughs> um, I, when I went out to the combine. I was a late, late call into the combine and being a late call in, I, I, I honestly didn't think I was going to get drafted in the first two rounds. Um, cause the, the first two rounds were one day and the rounds three and four were the next day. And I, I felt I had a good combine. Uh, but I, so I, I was, I was watching the, the draft, uh, but I wasn't watching it super closely. And then I, Tor I think Toronto had, the two picks and that I was one of them. And then I believe it was Toronto and they ended up trading him to Chicago. And I, I mean, I had no, no communication with Toronto. Um, and I actually thought I was going to go to San Jose, uh, who was a few picks later. And so I wasn't watching too closely. And then my agent called me mm -hmm. and he was like, so what do you think? I said, ah, you know, San Jose is coming up. I'm excited. He's like, well, are you watching? I said, maybe my stream's a little bit behind. He was like, dude, you just got drafted to Chicago. And I was like, no way. Um, it was, it was kind of a surreal moment because I, you know, I had always, always had this dream of playing professional soccer. Um, and then it kind of, I kind of got, you know, not playing a lot my freshman and sophomore year in college. I kind of maybe lost the dream a little bit. Um, thought that, you know, maybe professional soccer is not for me. And then, Kind of around my junior year, it turned around, and it I really believed in it again. Uh, so to finally hear that moment after all of these years of of work and dedication, and and also just for all the people that were around me that helped me get there, my parents, my coaches, my teams, my friends that supported me, uh, it was a big moment uh, because it it kind of all paid off. And uh, you ended up making your debut in 2018 against Darrell Salt Lake. Uh, how this how is that moment like for you? Knowing that hey, I'm getting my first starts. Uh, and yeah, this is, this is it. Uh, this is the big leagues. What yeah. That, I think that, like? yeah, that was the moment where it, it really sunk in, uh, because I know a lot of guys can kind of come into the league and maybe not, not play a game, especially goalkeepers. And I, I'd always had this a bit, a bit of fear in me, 
uh, that, you know, later down the road when I have kids, I could say I was a professional soccer player, but you know, I didn't play any games. Uh, and then at that moment, it was like, no, this is real. This is, I played this game. I played, you know, I've played MLS games. I made an impact on the league. Um, and then it, it was an amazing, amazing uh, experience. Uh, it was a good game and I played well. And I just, I, all I was thinking about was soaking in the moment. Uh, at that point, I, the nerves were kind of out of me. I, I was just, I was, had so much adrenaline for the moment and for, for the preparation that I had put in and just, I, I really, really appreciated that moment. Uh, it was, it was a great, a great memory. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you were, uh, during your time with Chicago Fire, that, that was when uh, you were all, uh, teammates with uh, Bastion Schwein's Tiger, correct? Mm -hmm. How was, how was he like as a presence on the, on the field and in the, in the locker room? Cause of course, you know, growing, growing up, he's uh, you know, world, world-class player and still, still is, you know? Um, yeah. He, uh, he was such a big name. You kind of have no idea what they're going to be like. Uh, and I had been in Chicago a few months before he came and it was, you know, there were these rumors, but there's, you know, there's always rumors in MLS that these big guys come in and, when to find out we actually signed him, it's like, oh, like, oh my gosh, this guy is a legend. Uh, and then to meet him, he is like, the, he is the nicest guy ever. Uh, just when he gets around a ball, he is like a kid in a candy store. He just, he loves soccer so much. And he's not, you know, he's not going to be the most uh, like rah rah, like we're going into battle kind of leader, but just the pure joy that he gets every time he's on the soccer field and the, the, the intelligence that he, shows that he has every time he's on the field uh is so inspiring uh i think you can just whether you know in his later years he obviously didn't have the speed uh and but it was what made him so incredible to me was his tactical awareness he always knew exactly where you know all 22 guys in the field were uh and where the spaces were and his his understanding of the game when in practice or when we were watching video uh was astounding and then just his his calmness and his composure was something that i had never seen before and it was it was amazing to watch every single day and uh you uh you also had a couple during your time in chicago you had a couple of uh loan loan spells you, you were in tulsa and uh in lansing um what what did uh, what did you take out of those uh loan spells because you mentioned earlier of course you know as a as a goalkeeper uh it's only you know, one spot out of the starting 11. So if, you know, there's multiple goalkeepers, playing time can be hard to, uh, hard to come by. Uh, what did you take from those two uh, loan experiences? Yeah, uh, Tulsa was uh, pretty short-lived. Uh, I, I would only go for, you know, down for a game and back. Uh, so it, it was great to get those games. I mean, I made my professional debut with Tulsa. Um, I remember that was my first year. And that for that game, I was definitely a bit nervous just because, like, you know, this is – this is it. This is my professional debut. It's not, it's not in the MLS, but it's still, mm -hmm. it's still step one. Uh, and so I think that that was, you know, a great experience to have, but I was never in Tulsa for very long. So I wasn't able to get immersed with the team uh, going to Lansing last year. Uh, I remember this is when Chicago brought in Kenny Cronholm. Mm -hmm. I think we had four goalkeepers at the time. And especially with David Osei, Kenny Cronholm, um, two older guys, I, just, I definitely wasn't going to play any games. And they told me that uh, they were they were very honest with me in Chicago and they wanted to send me out on loan. Um, and the only affiliate they had at the time was Lansing. Uh, it was a new team. In, it was in League One. So I, I, to be honest with you, I was not very stoked about it to drop down two levels. Um, but in the end, it was such a great experience. Um, I had... I had such a great time. Uh, I love the coaches. I love the guys. It was one of the best teams I have ever been on. Um, I think the level that we had at that team was very, very good. Um, I think we definitely could have competed in USL uh, championship, like, and, and really competed. So I think it, it, it just, for me personally, all of the guys were, you know, 20 to 25 years old, um, a lot of guys, everybody lived in the same complex, a lot of single guys. So, you know, we, it, it's a bit different in MLS because you have guys from all different, all different stages of life, uh, with families, kids, wives. Um, but in this team, it was, it was similar. It was almost like a mature college team where everybody was together. You go to training after training, 
you know, you go to coffee shops, you go to park, whatever you did, it was, you did it together. And I, I built some unbelievable relationships with guys there that, uh, that will definitely last a lifetime. Hmm. That's and also just playing, uh, playing. We had, we had a really good team. We had a, a great, great string of a couple months without losing. Um, the coach had some, some great confidence in me, uh, which was which massive for my career. And I think had I not gone there and played 20 plus games there, um, it's hard to say what would have happened. So I, I'm really thankful for my time in, in Lansing because getting games is, is so valuable as a goalkeeper. If you don't get the games, it's, it's very easy to fall off. And after, after your time in, uh, with Chicago and, and Lansing, you end up signing with the, your current team, Seattle, Seattle Sounders. Uh, and of course, this uh, entire 2020 season has been something that no one could have imagined uh, happening. Um, what was, uh, were there other, after your time in Chicago, were there other teams uh, that were interested in, in your services uh, besides Seattle? Uh, yes, it, it all happened so, so fast. Uh, I... I found out my option wasn't going to get picked up by Chicago. So I knew I wasn't going to return to Chicago. And then within a couple of days, my, I, I was actually on vacation uh, with one of my friends in Europe at the time. And uh, my agent called me. He said, hey, Seattle wants to talk to you. And he said, there are a couple other teams. I, there was a lot of goalkeeper movement. So I think there, there would have been some other opportunities. But Seattle was the first ones that I had talked to. Um, I talked to... Garth Lagerway, the GM, Tommy Dutra, the goalkeeper coach, uh, had great conversations with them. They seemed to really like me. I, I really liked what they had, uh, what they had going on, the culture that they had built. And just looking at the Sounders organization from the outside, it was, it was a place that I wanted to be. Uh, one, the organization, two, the city. It's, it's a winning culture. It's a fantastic city. Um, and I luckily, you know, they traded for me right before the reentry draft. So I, I, I think there may have been some other teams, um, but it's, it is so for, I was so fortunate in the way that Seattle, of all the teams, when I looked across the board, Seattle was definitely the team I wanted to go to. And just kind of by happenstance, they were the ones that reached out to me and traded for me. Uh, so I, I was very fortunate in that sense. And I, I'm so happy here. I love, I love the culture. I love the, the guys, the city. Uh, I think I'm getting so much better um, as, as, as a player, as a person, um, the, the way things are done here is so detail oriented. And I guess so much attention from, from the coaches, Tommy Dutra, the goalkeeper coach is, is so fantastic. So technical. Uh, he, he's a great fit for me. Working with Steph Fry has been amazing. You know, he's definitely one of, if not one of, if not the best goalkeeper in the league for the last, you know, eight, 10 years, uh, and just seeing him train every day, seeing his work ethic is because he is, he is where I want to be. Mm. Um, he, his career is one that I want to have and to see it and work with it. I know what it takes and I know, I know where I need to be, uh, what my day to day needs to look like. Um, and I think that is, that that's, it's a great opportunity for me. Mm. And when uh, this season, when, uh, of course, when the uh, coronavirus pandemic took over uh, and started to affect the, the season, uh, of course, MLS, uh, just like other major sports, postponed uh, games for, for a while before the uh, MLS is back uh, tournament. Uh, what, was, what was it like, you know, first hearing about the virus kind of, you know, canceling, postponing games? And then what was the team and what was your reaction to the uh, MLS's back uh, tournament and how did that, how did that go in your, your mind? Yeah, I think it was, uh, it was tough when, when back in March, when everything went down, um, I'm sorry, I, don't, I don't think anybody had any real understanding of what it was and what was going to happen. I remember when uh, I believe it was the jazz game got canceled initially and that, that was, you know, the first thing to really happen. And that was kind of when everybody started to freak out. And then our, I think they changed our, changed our flight from Houston or cause we were supposed to play Houston that weekend. Um, so then they, they changed our flight, then they canceled the game and then we didn't practice for a couple of days. And I, I don't think anybody had any concept of what the next uh, several months, I mean, if not year was going to look like. So I think every, and you know, even when we weren't training, for the first week, for the first two weeks. Um, we had no idea if we were gonna get back to training the next week or if we were, if the season was gonna happen at all. Um, so every day, it was, it was tough. Uh, 
because just because every day you didn't know what the next day was going to look like. Um, but I think it was handled well. Um, There's a lot of dialogue between the players association and the league, and we did what we could. Um, and I think the MLS is back tournament was a, you know, a great way for us to get back into games and back into full trainings because a lot of teams weren't able to train in their market. Uh, luckily we had been able to train for a week or two before that as a full team. Um, but to get games and to feel like we we're in a safe environment, obviously there was a, it was a bit of chaos when we first got there and everything happened with that Dallas and Nashville. Um, but once all of those cases had stopped spreading within the teams, uh, luckily they never spread to other teams, but it, it, everybody was, so, you know, so safe, always wearing masks, you know, everything was so safe about it, but I also felt very safe uh, in terms of, you know, health wise and, and just, you know, being in Disney, it was, it was a safe environment for us mm. and we were able to really focus on soccer. Um, I know for guys with families, it was a bit tough. Um, I, I didn't have that, that blockade, but uh, it, it was, it, it was a good opportunity for us for the lead to get back to soccer mm. for sure. Mm. And so far in your professional career, you've uh, played for American teams. Are you ever, are, are you open-minded to uh, playing in, uh, let's say, a league outside of the United States or into Europe? Has that crossed your mind? It's, it's crossed my mind, potentially. Uh, I think the MLS is getting so much better and it's growing so much every year that I think I, I would like to be in the MLS. Uh, I would like to be part of the rise of, of you know, soccer in the U.S. because – I mean, I remember growing up, going to Columbus Crew games, um, and you know there were like eight, ten teams, um, and now to see so many teams and them having to cap, you know, cap the number of teams because everybody wants invested. Uh, it, it's it's a great time to be part of soccer in the U.S. because it is growing so fast, and I think the league is getting so much better that I. I would like to be a part of that. Um, so I think as long as I'm able to stay in the MLS, um, I, I would like to do so. Um, but it's, I'm not definitely not ruling it off the list of going overseas and, and seeking other opportunities because it is a great opportunity to see, see the world, um, see other parts of the country through, through work. Um, if you can, if you can call soccer work. <laughs> Did you ever have, uh, a like favorite, uh, club team, uh, growing up to watch, uh, let's say like UEFA champions league or any other club team? Yeah. Uh, for a while, Chelsea has been my favorite team, oh, um, uh, back between uh, between eighth and ninth grade, actually, my club coach had some affiliation with uh, Adidas, and we actually went over uh, to England and trained on the Chelsea uh, training grounds and saw Stamford Bridge, and we did a few other things. But uh, I think that was kind of the root of my Chelsea fanhood, uh, mm -hmm. and I've it's been it's been awesome. They've had you know they've been great for a number of years, uh, and I think this year exceeded expectations for everybody <laughs> mm -hmm. uh but it, it was it was awesome to watch frank lampard would be the manager uh stay w within the club and uh i think the the transfer ban was actually is was actually made it exciting because you you saw the products of the academy you saw you know what the young kids can do and it was it was a great opportunity for them for uh for the young guys to to show what they can do Mm. And was there any goalkeeper uh, growing up that you uh, looked up to that you wanted to emulate uh, your game uh, towards? Um, yeah, I say, so I think part of being a Chelsea fan, I, I, lo I really like Petr Cech. Um, I'm not sure if I ever thought I could emulate him just because he, he was so lanky. Um, but I think, you know, he was a great guy to watch. He, he had a fantastic career. Um, I, you know, now I really like Ter Stegen. I really like Neuer. Um, Neuer is, is one of a kind and he is very hard to emulate, <laughs> but uh, I like, obviously, you know, he's so successful. His, his work ethic is incredible. Um, and I, I, I do like, I like Ter Stegen a lot. I like how confident he is with his feet. He makes saves. He plays for, you know, fantastic club. Uh, but I think growing up, I definitely watched Petr Cech and I remember watching, you know, Edwin van der Sar the most. Um, so there, there are some you know great goalkeepers to watch and learn from. Hmm. And um, of course, not everybody uh, has, uh, not every athlete makes it to the highest of levels or make it to MLS or any professional league. What are, uh, let's say, three pieces of advice you would give to somebody who uh, aspires to become a professional soccer player or even a professional goalkeeper? Yeah, I think it is, it is so important to 
know that you really, really want it. Um, so you, you have to set your goals and you have to, um, commit yourself to them because, um, it is to be a professional soccer player. Like, you know, every, everybody wants to do it. It's the dream. Um, but it is, it is work. It is hard work. You, ha you have to take care of yourself. You have to be disciplined. You have to take care of your body, your life off the field. So I think at first, the first step is you have to really commit yourself. Um, and you have to decide that that's what you want to do and say, and, and, and do it, follow, follow every day. Um, and then I think along with that comes working as hard as you can, uh, out, you know, outworking all those around you, uh, making sure that you're the hardest working one and that you're, you know, inspiring those around you to work because you need, it, it's not an individual sport. So you need your team to, to work hard. You need to inspire your team. Uh, and then I think surround yourself with great people is the third one. Um, surround yourself with the best coaches, the best players. I think the, in the off seasons in college were when I got the best. And I remember my freshman year, I trained with Brad Jacobson and uh, Randy Jasowski, who were two, two seniors. Uh, Randy ended up going to play in Scotland for four years. And then Brad actually ended up at, at UW uh, to play a fifth year and had, had a fantastic year there. Uh, and then, so I, I, I trained with them. We worked, you know, every day, you know, outside of the team doing extra and then my sophomore year and, and years, and years, the rest of the years in college, I spent so much time with the goalkeeper coach because he was he was so fantastic for me. So surround yourself with people, learn from them, um, work your you know work your heart out, and commit to it every single day. Thank you, uh, uh, Stefan. I want to say thank you very much for having the time to be on the podcast, uh, and uh, I wish uh, you guys and Seattle Sounders uh, best of luck the rest of the MLS season. Absolutely. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, I appreciate it and good luck with the, the future episodes and getting more MLS oh, players on there. <laughs> thank you. I'll try my best. Hey, if you know anybody, if, you, if uh, Raul Rui Diaz or Stefan Fry, anybody, let me, let me know. I'll, I'll make time for them. <laughs> All right. I'll throw I'll throw your name out there. <laughs> cool, cool. Appreciate it. Uh, have a good rest of the day, man. All right. Take care. You too. Take care. Take care.